I uh, am Jeff Crapper. I teach at a Beaverton Academy of Science, or used to teach at Beaverton Academy of Science and Engineering. Um, we are a project lead the way school. And one of the things that we have done is implement all three pathways at our school through Project Lead the Way. If you're not familiar, uh, Project Lead the Way is a national-based STEM program, uh, basically pre-K through 12. And basically, our, their goal is to introduce um, all students a high-quality STEM curriculum. And I was basically the person who started the biomedical program um, there in 2013. And so one of the things that I uh, just kind of go over a little bit about uh, again, our, the, my role and what we did there. Um, but before we begin, um, there is my contact information. Feel free if you ever have any questions um, or if you want to reach out afterwards. Um, I'm currently now the work-based learning TOSA uh, teacher on special assignment. And so one of my jobs is to, or my main part of my job is how to connect industry professionals with our, basically all of our 33 programs of study for the district and providing basically real life um, opportunities for students to learn how to demonstrate these skills um, they're learning in our CTE programs. So BASE was actually started as a school that really wanted to target um, students of color or underserved populations. Um, Beaverton School District is pretty unique. Um, we are the fourth largest district in the state of Oregon. Um, our students speak 101 different languages uh, and about 60% of our students um, are going to be students of color. And at base, we also see that about 60% of our students qualify for free reduced lunch. And so the goal of this program and the school was to how can we make sure and provide high quality hands on learning opportunities for students and help them succeed basically wherever they are, whether they choose to go straight into the career after high school, um, whether they choose to go and get a certification like medical assisting or pharmacy tech. Um, or do they go on to college um, and at different routes? And so the school basically program was started in 2014. Um, by 2017, we were recognized as one of the top health science programs in the nation um, through both Advanced CTE and then also Project Lead the Way uh, as well. And so I'll have a little bit more information um, about our school and basically how our school started in our program later. But I did want to start off, um, we actually had an opportunity to show um, basically a local news station about what our program was all about. And one of the things that you'll see is it was really intentional about how we designed our school is how do we teach by doing um, and, and basically emphasize learning by doing instead of focusing on just traditional lecture. And one of the things we see was specifically, as you know, with again, underrepresented minority students is that we see that kinesthetic um, project-based learning is one of the great equalizers that helps uh, basically increase that academic performance for these students. And so um, this is how it shows you a little bit about our program. Um, and also you're gonna see the table at work too, which is great. And so I'll go ahead um, and start the video. The following segment is sponsored by Pacific Office Automation. Well, this week's Leaders in Learning teach students all about science. But as K2's Angelica Thornton shows us, their reach goes far beyond the classroom. Take a peek inside any biomedical studies class at Beaverton's Health and Science School, and you might be confused, not just by the fancy equipment, but by the kids running it. This seems more like med school. This is a 31-year-old male who took a gunshot to the brain. Jeffrey Crapper designed the program six years ago. If we told you about all the teaching awards he and his colleagues have won since then, we'd run out of time. Students say they are a perfect team. It's amazing, honestly. They're experts in what they do, and they always make an effort to really um, make a connection with the student, one that helps me develop and helps me have an idea of where I want to go. And the students have already gone far, well before graduation. In addition to the hands-on work in the classroom, there's job shadowing, internships, volunteering. They even travel to STEM conferences across the country to show off their stuff. Some of those kids were recent immigrants. Um, some of them were DACA students. And 
despite all the odds against them, they still got up on stage and basically shared their work here in front of a huge audience. Crabber says most of the students in the program are underserved and underrepresented in the community. And then relax and then just continue breathing. Miriam Anwar is a refugee of two wars, first in Iraq where she was born, then Syria. She hardly spoke English when she moved to the U.S. and started the program in seventh grade. Now she's determined to become a surgeon. I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity and to have such amazing teachers and to have such a great program being offered at our school. Ask the teachers how they manage to collaborate so well and produce such impressive results, and they say it's all about the kids. You know, we work really hard to um, advocate for students, and so knowing that I'm working with someone else that has like the same ideals and the same hopes for our students is really fantastic. They've blossomed, they've grown, they've matured, and they've grown up and they've become monster. Doug Smith, Carly Harris, and Jeff Crapper are leaders in learning because they motivate their students towards success, somehow uncovering every single child's love for learning. They're some of my favorite people in the school, some of my favorite people, period. I'm so incredibly glad and lucky that I've been able to have them be with me throughout high school. In Beaverton, Angelica Thornton, K2 News. Great story there. Do you know a teacher, coach, or... So one of the things you saw in that, uh, basically that short video, um, one of our hopes is how do we make our learning accessible to all students? Um, and again, we saw with our, the video and you saw a little bit about my, my former students as well, but we also saw there's so many barriers that students can experience. And one of the things that we were very intentional about is how do we integrate technology to basically improve our academic outcomes? Um, we wanted to make sure that language wasn't a barrier. We wanted to make sure we had high engaging opportunities. And we also wanted to make sure that um, we are preparing our students for these careers. So for those of you that don't know much about um, federal programs of study, one of the things that we have to do, and it's really encouraged to do is that number one is we articulate with local colleges. So my program was, that I started was articulated with Oregon Tech, um, which is basically one of the leading engineer and engineering and healthcare tech colleges and the universities in the, in the nation. Um, also too, we see that how do we have many off ramps for students? Um, what are some of the options that they can do and engage in and be available for again, a career that is high wage and high demand. And then one of the other things we see too is how do we educate students about the different opportunities out there? And so as a biomedical science program through Project of the Way, we really saw that we have this combination between the biology and the medicine. And one of the things that's unique about my school is that it was six through 12. And so we started engaging students um, in the healthcare aspect starting in sixth grade. Um, and we really focused on in sixth grade, they basically had a case study where a student was in the wheelchair and they had to design basically adaptive terminal, uh, basically adaptive technology that actually helped that person live through their daily life and, and figure out what tasks they could do. In seventh grade, we had our medical detectives class. And basically that's what I'll talk a little bit more later, but we had opportunities for students to learn a little bit about microbiology and then also interact with human anatomy. And that's where we use the table for our seventh grade class. It's basically learning and be able to dig deeper into the nervous system. And then in eighth grade, we have again, a virology class and really talking about how do viruses spread. Um, unfortunately, that's really timely right now with COVID, um, but we had an entire class there as well. And then when we look at the high school biomedical sciences program, we really saw four main classes. Our freshmen basically had a forensic science unit and they had to figure out how did Anna Garcia die. Um, and there was a whole, the whole nature of the semester was using that as a case study. For our sophomore class, human body systems, um, we articulated that with human anatomy 103, um, which is an introduction to human anatomy class through Oregon Tech. Um, and we saw, again, opportunities for students to learn about the anatomy and how basically the body works and the physiology. And I'll talk more about that and how we use the table. But that was one of the areas where we use the table quite frequently. Our junior level class uh, was medical interventions, which is a pretty detailed microbiology class. Um, we have students do the PEGLO lab where basically they take uh, a plasma from a jellyfish and put it into E. coli to cause it to glow in the dark. We also had students test their own DNA to see if they had the PTC gene to uh, basically taste 
bitter food. Um, they had to basically create a prototype for a prosthetic arm and be able to drink a glass of water with it. Um, and then we also saw a lot of also, uh, various labs as well um, with basically um, protein electrophoresis and basically introducing to, to some of the advanced technology with biotech. Um, and then the senior capstone course was one that I was teaching as well. Uh, and basically students had a series of small units that they had to compete, uh, complete during the course of the year. Um, they had to basically look at what is wrong with emergency medicine and how would they come up with innovations to make it better. They had to design their own um, exercise physiology experiment, which you saw in that on that uh, piece by the Channel 2 News in Portland. Um, students spent about eight weeks collecting data and they basically tried to create their own physiology experiment that produced uh, statistically significant results. Um, they also had to come up with medical innovations. But one of the things we see for our capstone course through Project of the Way is they had to actually do a capstone presentation. And I'll talk more about that later, but that's how they use the table is they picked one of the case studies there. And then they actually had to defend and create uh, a treatment protocol and defend that to a panel of educational and also uh, medical professionals. And so we really try to look at how do we educate students about all the different careers out there um, in the medical field? Because when they come to us as freshmen or come to us in middle school, it's like, hey, I'm going to be a doctor, a nurse, or a surgeon. And by the end of their senior year, we've been able to educate them about all the different opportunities in the medical field and give them a great platform. And maybe there's something else they want to do that basically express their interest. Now, one of the things we see too, and we're talking about the biomedical professionals is really looking through how do we actually know we're training our students um, to be again in high wage, high demand careers. And so we actually have some great partnerships with Kaiser. Um, we also had students involved um, in orthopedic and fracture clinic um, and basically doing that as well. Um, and looking at the opportunities of what are some of the things that we can do to make sure it's hands on. Kaiser actually did a great job for us and created an explorers program. And so our students actually were able to go to their facilities um, and basically work with their, uh, their staff um, on a specific topic. So like one of the things we saw is that they had their casting professionals um, and durable goods, and they had to learn how to size up different braces or equipment or things like that. We also saw too that we had an entire thing about facilities management um, at a hospital because that's actually something that's really important, um, especially right now with COVID. Um, one of my other hats I do is I'm a volunteer firefighter and EMR, and a lot of our hospitals are on divert right now. And it's not because of a, a shortage of nurses or doctors or beds, it's because of the treatment and the cleaning protocols that are, have to take place um, with uh, COVID and how are we actually speed this process up. Um, we had students involved in a variety of different stuff hands-on and they get to do these with the skills. Now, that's actually a, a great point when we're looking at as well as for those of you that are high school and you're in a CTE program, um, as you know, with Perkins 5, one of the things that we had to do is work-based learning. And so we were able to look at how do we actually engage students in work-based learning alongside industry professionals. Um, and one of the questions I just saw in the chat too is, are classes cohorted? So one of the things we see is with our, our school um, is that we have students, because we were a small school of about a thousand students, um, it really dictated about certain classes where if what they had for math um, or if they took an advanced English class. So sometimes my biomedical innovations class might have four to three students in one class period and 17 in the other. Uh, but it really is based off of grade level, and then the cohorts are based on that grade level. So hopefully I, I answer that question. Uh, the other thing we see too, uh, apologize for that, is thinking about this. And one of the things that was really insightful for me um, is I, I know that I enjoy teaching and I'm really passionate about this. Um, the one job I said I'd never do in my life is become be a teacher. My grandmother was a teacher. My parents were teachers. And so I actually went to college in, for sports medicine. And so I'm still licensed as an athletic trainer. And I got involved in the medical field because I got hurt so many times in football. Um, by the age of 16, I had three reconstructive knee surgeries and I fell in love with anatomy and partially because I wanted to learn how to put my own patella back in place when it dislocated. And thinking about how this works and I can think about how students learn, this is a fundamental switch. And this is why I loved using technology um, like you saw with the table what you saw with the motion capture system. Um, when I was asked to start this program from scratch, 
uh, my, my former principal said, I just, Jeff, I want you to dream big. Um, and I only had about a $5,000 budget. And so that's why we saw the VO2 max machine. And I did that very intentionally because everyone remembers those Gatorade commercials where they're wearing the blue mask, they're sweating, they're on the exercise bike or their treadmill. And by having that, again, that cardio coach VO2 max machine, that was a $5,000 investment. But people got excited about that because it can relate to something they saw in real life. Um, and I think that's one of the things as a CTE teacher is how do we make our learning applicable to real life? And then one of the things that uh, my, my principal came to me and said, hey, Jeff, the VO2 max machine was awesome, but I need to dream bigger. So um, we ended up, I said, okay, well, my background's in sports medicine. Let's go ahead and look at a motion capture system. Um, and so that's how we got our OptiTrack motion capture system. And when it caught on that we were actually engaging engineering students, computer science students, and healthcare students, all for the same project, um, project the way I asked my students to actually come and be presenters on the main stage at the 2017 um, PLTW Summit in Florida. Um, number one, it was kind of scary shipping a $30,000 system FedEx, but it was really cool seeing my students actually, as you saw in that news piece, up on stage demonstrating this equipment and talking about their hands-on learning experiences. And I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about a CTE program is that if we figure out opportunities for students to, again, process this information themselves, be able to talk out loud, and so the teacher is more of a facilitator than actually the instructor, the learning actually that takes place just is astronomically more than compared to the traditional lecture format. So that's one of the things that we have, and we just basically got a very small um, grant of about $1 million to um, remodel our area. So we have actually have a nursing simulator and we have a hospital ward. We have our biomechanics lab where we have our wireless um, EMG. We have, as you saw, our VO2 max machine. We have our motion capture system. We have our VO2 um, force plate. Uh, sorry, we have a VO2 machine and also our Vertec force plates. Um, and it was really cool having a biomechanics lab that actually rivals, you know, some graduate schools, which is which is great. But one of the things that I found in my experience, because I know that people always ask, well, how do you pay for the table? Um, how did you get access to this technology? And I would say one of my things that was really encouraging for us is I had students use it and I had students share their story using it. And I think that's one of the things in education we don't, uh, we sometimes forget to do is once people see that we're using money well, and once we see that students are passionate about something and students are actually the ones taking control, it was really easy. I mean, I, my principal came to me and said, hey, we're buying a cadaver table for you. Um, you're, you're getting the anatomized table. Um, we didn't even ask for it. The district just said, hey, you're doing so many great things. And so within four years, we actually had our, our anatomized table. And it's something we've embedded into our middle school and our high school biomedical health science classes. And I think that one of the things I really love about Project Lead the Way and CTE just in general is looking at, again, that opportunity for self-growth and self-exploration and giving those kind of those moments where they can actually learn how to do this stuff on their own and become experts on it as well. So I love this quote. Um, and again, for me as an educator, one of my mentors said, you know, Jeff, if a teacher is doing the talking, the teacher is doing the learning, but if the students are doing the talking, the students are doing the learning. Uh, and so that was something that was really profound for me is how do I do that fundamental switch where the locus of control in my classes goes from me as a teacher to my students uh, as well. Now, I realize not everyone is familiar with Project Lead the Way. Um, and again, Project Lead the Way is a national STEM-based curriculum. I'm a master teacher for them. And so I actually teach other teachers how to teach these classes. Um, and actually, of course, show them how to use the table as well, because we're seeing that more and more of our programs um, have, are using the table for their curriculum, especially for human body systems and biomedical innovations. It fits really well with those two classes and then also the middle school medical detectives class. But one of the things we see again as a fundamental shift is how do we actually use this problem-based and project-based design to do learning? Um, and the table is actually a really nice resource for that because there's so many options. And one of the things we'll talk about in just a second, and we'll talk about how I use it in my capstone course, is really thinking about finding a case study where students want to learn more about it 
And then they basically have an opportunity where they become the experts in trying to figure out how would you treat this person? Like what medical protocols would be in place? And also too, like one of the things that I wrestled with is again, for their national health science standards for all high school CTE programs for health science. One of the things that we're challenged to do as educators is teaching our students about empathy. And so one of the things I'm really thinking about as well, when we do these things and we use a table, I challenge my students to think about, you know, looking at those case studies, right? Every one of those people was a real person. Like it's sometimes easier just to look on the screen and see the image, but to actually think about as well, um, going that part. So those are some of the opportunities we saw as well and have the and looking at how does the how does the table basically integrate with that and provide opportunities for that learning. So I did want to show a little bit about how we're using technology. And Joe, I do see your comment. And I'm going to, again, that's one of the next scenes that we're getting to um, as well. So here's a little bit more about our program. And again, how we're using technology to engage with students. Hi, I'm Jeff Crapper, and I teach the biomedical innovations and biology classes here at Health and Science High School. Health and Science is a project lead the way school, and we have both tracks here, the engineering and also the biomedical. So my name is Tom Baker. I'm the engineering instructor here at Health and Science. One of the things that we've been trying to do from the very beginning uh, with Project Lead the Way is to really integrate our engineering and biomedical pathways. Um, it was never our intent to have those be two distinct and separate pathways, but we always wanted to re-engage and reconnect our students, especially around the capstone uh, senior year. We have students of both pathways are in the same class. They're sharing engineering expertise in, in biomedical classes, and we have the biomedical perspective brought into the engineering capstone class also. And it really benefits us both ways. The VO2 machine measures a person's lung capacity and lung efficiency, which we then can use to connect to different studies and their age and their physical ability. We're in the medical detectives class, and so today what we're seeing is they're doing a hands-on lab to get their heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate, and then to see how it changes through physical exercise and even through like meditation and cooling down. They get to experience what you get to do with the medical side of this school. The high schoolers have a lot more knowledge and wisdom about what goes on in high school, and so if we get to talk to these middle schoolers and tell them how awesome some classes are in high school, it might like influence them to go take those classes. Jennifer, so what I'll have you do is I'll have you step on the plyometrics box and then jump off of it, in front of it. And uh, while you do it, I'll be looking at the screen, okay? So I'll press record and then um, I'll tell you when to go. Okay, you can go. All right, that was perfect. You want to come take a look at what we recorded? Okay, so as I'm playing it, you're here and then I said go and you see how you jump on top of it and you fall. So the system we have here, the way it works is that each of the eight cameras are able to send out infrared light and this infrared light hits the markers and as the infrared light hits the markers, the markers bounces off the light back to the cameras. We already have footage of a female doing fox jumps. Over here we are capturing footage of Mazen doing fox jumps in order to conduct a comparative study of the movement of the knee between male and female. So motion capture is a process of capturing the movements of the human body or objects. It is being used in many industries around the world. Some examples are it is being used in the video game industry, movies, the military, as well as biomedical and medicine. And here at HS2, we're using the motion capture system specifically for biometrics and kinesiology, which is the study of how the body moves. So that gives you a little bit of information about my program uh, and what we did. And so one of the things I wanted to show about the table and really talk about, and I give you some of my resources here. Um, so the hard part is, is that the, some of the curriculum that we use um, for Project Lead the Way course is copyrighted. So I can't share actual lessons from um, Project Lead the Way and where we specifically use the table. I'll talk about them. But I did want to do is, is make sure and give you opportunities. And this is a, a Google folder that I shared with all of you. 
And basically, what did we look like for our senior capstone presentations? So when you saw all of our technology and you saw kind of what we're using, we can actually use a table to, for any of those aspects. So when you saw with the motion capture, and when we had students actually look at, again, the comparative study of how much of a Q angle and basically how much of a delay the vastus medialis has when you jump down, um, we see we also can look at that on the table, right? That's one of the things we see for our, again, for our human body systems class is when we talk about Q angle and then also we can connect what is the likelihood of someone tearing their ACL with a higher Q angle, we can actually use the table for that and basically remove all of the soft tissue and really look at, again, the ligaments and the students can actually measure that. So one of the things we see for our medical detectives class, which is a seventh grade class that I taught, is the entire course is set up as an 18 week unit. And we had our students basically go through a microbiology and basically a whole thing with epidemiology. But we also have an entire unit on, again, how the nervous system works. And so one of the things I really worked hard with our, my middle school students is how do I engage them and get them excited about human anatomy? So I think one of the features I really enjoyed in trying to keep their curiosity up is I actually had the table projected up on the screen with the, you know, the two HMI ports. And I had, of course, the brain, the eyes, and the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system up on the screen. And one of the things that was really nice about the table, right, is you can actually rotate it around and kind of show, again, where the different nerves are and, again, those different nerve pathways. The other thing we saw, um, and we use the table a lot for our human body systems, is we have an entire unit uh, basically where it's bone detectives. And they have to basically look at a skeleton and basically determine if that skeleton was male or female. Um, and it's written on a case study that you're basically come across and you, you find the skeleton, but you don't know, again, the gender or the sex of the person. And you're trying to figure out, what, is this a male or was this a, a female who had passed away? Well, one of the things we did is took that unit in HBS and with all the plastic skeletons we had, but we were also with the four cadavers that actually are on there, we were of course able to customize that and actually had the students measure the, again, the Q angle and also look at the hip um, and figure out by determining the hip on the table and by also with the skeletons, what, what would they basically determine the sex of this, the skeleton of being? And so it was another way of hands-on learning with that. The other thing we see too with again learning about um, prosthetics um, for a medical interventions class where our students actually had to basically come through and build a prosthetic arm and we actually had basically tested and put the uh, user veneer um, e uh, EMG basically sensors uh, and basically we're able to dictate and say hey, what muscles are being innervate, innervated and used to specific movements. Well, the nice thing about the table, right, is we can actually look at those as well. Um, and we were actually able to improve our sensor location based off the knowledge of where these muscles were and basically where the origin and assertion was located. Uh, and then the other thing we see too, um, that was really, really helpful is looking at with our capstan presentation. Now I'm not gonna show this entire presentation because it's about 12 minutes, but one of the things that I really wanted to be articulate with my students and be very intentional about is how do I create authentic assessment experiences where they actually have to create and basically be scored by someone that's not their teacher. Um, and I think that one of the things that I was very intentional about when I started our program is knowledge is nothing unless you can apply it and use it and share it. And so with the table, you have about 1600 case studies, right? And about 800 or 900 of those are actually case studies that we see that involve people. And so one of my students' exam favorites was a gunshot to the, the brain that you saw in that video, um, that 31-year-old male. And you can actually, again, look at the MRI where the, the nine millimeter bullet was located and also look at the skull uh, as well. But I challenge my students to figure about, you know, one of the things that people struggle with healthcare is the lack of empathy. <laughs> How do you actually share bad news? How do you make sure that you don't get burnt out as a medical professional and just think about that person as a, as a medical diagnosis and not a person. Because that's one of the things we see sometimes, especially with HMOs um, or again, right now, right? Because our, our healthcare system is stretched thin. Medical professionals are, are really, really struggling. And how do we actually look through and make sure that we actually treat people as people? And again, like I said, as a national 
healthcare standard, teaching empathy is one of the things that, again, teachers, health science teachers are expected to do. So I basically had our students do a variety of case studies based off the table. And if you click on that link or type in that link um, and you go through, one of the things I had them do is write a research paper based off of the medical condition that the table presented. Um, the other thing too, um, is I had them look through and create a case study because I know in talking to our partners, which is Oregon Health Science University, one of the things they really wanted to make sure is that students understood case studies, be able to read scientific literature and be able to articulate that, again, high level, high lexile knowledge and break it down into more simple terms. And I, it made me really, really proud of my students when I had people um, from the pre-med program over at OHSU tell about my students as you know, 17 and 18 year olds outperform some 22, 23 year olds and basically understanding and articulating some of these cases. And so that's one of the things we saw too is this case study. And then I also wanted to make sure too, is how do we make sure and look at a holistic view of the, these case studies? Because definitely the person who had a gunshot to the brain, right? <clears throat> one of the things that we saw is they're gonna need a lot of physical um, and physiological help, right? They're going to have to need things like working with an occupational therapist and a physical ther therapist, depending on where the bullet hit, probably a speech language pathologist as well. But I also figured one of my students to think about, too, is I think the mental health is one of the things we actually don't consider in a lot of healthcare situations. So I wanted them to think deeper and think about situations, too, is, you know, how are you going to make sure that this person actually heals well and heals fast? by addressing not just the physical needs, but also mental health needs. Um, one of the other case studies my students love is the, the gentleman who was in a motorcycle accident um, and has multiple fractures. Um, one of the other ones is the stabbing victim. And my students chose these and they really wanted to focus again, what is it going to take if I'm a healthcare professional for this person to do well and to recover as best as possible? So because these are not copyrighted by Project Lawyer, I gave you all my case studies and give those examples. But I also, of course, wanted to show some of the other areas we use the table for Project Lead the Way. Now, the other thing, too, the reason why I asked um, in the poll is that if you give certifications. So for high school programs, one of the things we see with Perkins 5 when Trump signed it um, a few years ago is there's a big push with high school students, um, again, learning how to become career ready and basically acquiring industry certifications while they're still in high school. So we had a couple in our school that we did. One of them is medical assisting. Um, and I'll put it actually in the chat for those of you um, that are high school um, programs. But NHA.now is the website for the National Healthcare Situ uh, Association. And they might, oh, so sorry, it's NHA now. There's no period there. Um, and one of the things that they do uh, is basically provide 12 different or I think 12 different certifications based off of how do we actually look through and prepare students um, for these careers. And so high school students become um, certified as medical assistants, um, phlebotomy technicians. Uh, we also see pharmacy technicians and EKG uh, technicians. And they, they can graduate from high school with these certifications straight. Well, one of the things I have to say is that for us, like this passing rate for medical assisting in this country um, is about 68 to 70 percent. But by having the table and be able to teach the anatomy um, in a really dynamic way, we were able to get our students passing rate to almost 90 percent. And so we see that there are some great curriculum out there for, uh, again, from medical assisting. Um, one of them we see is the AES, uh, Healthcare in the 21st Century. Um, NHA now has some resources as well. Uh, and basically figuring out how do we make these concepts come alive. And I think one of the things we say, especially with students of color, especially with students who have a primary language that is not English, they really struggle with the comprehension of anatomy because they don't get to see it. And so by complementing what we use for the medical assisting curriculum and being able to use that um, as well um, in the context of um, helping students get industry certifications, we had a much higher passing rate than the national average. Uh, the other thing too um, we saw as well is of course thinking about um, again, pharmacy technicians. So our high school students can actually graduate um, and become certified uh, pharmacy techs 
through the PTCB, which is the pharmacy, uh, pharmacy tech certification board. And one of the things, again, is coming to the fact is when you're learning about all the medications, you have to actually understand, again, what are the side effects? And again, the anatomy is a big component to that. And so this is another way by using the table and having the table accessible for students to actually examine and look at on their own. It was really successful in helping our students come alive and basically pass these really difficult tests. Um, our program had about a 55% pass rate on the pharmacy tech, um, which again, remember my students are 17 and 18 year olds uh, as well. And so pretty proud of them in that as well. Again, the table provides some great opportunities to make this as well. Um, yes, the case studies, Julio, are shared in that folder that uh, Jake put in the chat. Uh, the other thing too, that is really important. So one of our other certification we have is personal training. Um, and this is one of the areas where the table was crucial in helping our students learn. And so we use the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Um, our students become certified personal trainers um, as well. And again, this is another uh, career that's high wage, high demand, right? Because we see that we talk about obesity in the United States, um, getting people fit, um, being proactive regarding our health. Um, but the hard part and the most difficult part with becoming a personal trainer is knowing where every single muscle where the origin and assertion is located. And so having the ability to find on the table where specific muscles are and then apply that to a certification program like personal training was really influential in helping our students pass those exams um, and become successful in that. We also see two areas that were really important as well as looking about muscle movement and also talking about the type of levers that occur with the different joints. Again, looking at the skeleton and using the table as an opportunity was a great way to make that happen as well. Um, before I do that, uh, yes. So great question, Angela. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause here for a second um, for ask, so you can ask more questions. Um, but uh, yes, Angela, so uh, certifications that you mentioned, also courses in your program, no, they are not courses in our program. It's something that we add to it. So one of the things that is really beneficial um, with our project of the way, but also just in general, is that we were able to also have a health careers class. Um, and in that health careers class, students were able to look at and pick a certification. Now, some of them did multiple. Um, the one that we actually just added was emergency medical responder because students can become EMRs at the age of 16. And especially looking at, again, a trauma situation, right? This is a great way to use the table because for our EMR, um, you have to be able to do a trauma scenario and basically know how to respond. And you have to be able to palpate and identify all the first like potential sources of trauma. So definitely using some of the trauma case studies in the table, um, like the motorcycle accident or like the stabbing victim, those would be great ways to make it come to life so they can actually see it and they're gonna be able to articulate how would I respond to the situation as emergency medical professional. Um, now for all of our colleges, um, most CTE programs, they are asked to, they're required by law to basically align with college standards, um, but most because in the process of aligning, they actually can get articulated as well. So we were able to articulate um, our software level, um, basically human body system class with anatomy 103. Um, at our local university or our tech university. Um, we also were able to articulate um, 109, um, which was introduction to medical science. Um, we also were able to articulate uh, sports medicine. Um, and also a big one that we were able to do was uh, introduction to emergency medicine as well. And so those give our students some options to use the table in those college courses and be able to apply their learning towards our certifications as well. Um, are there any other questions that, again, at this time, things you want me to address? All right, I'm not seeing any. Feel free to put those in there. So one of the things that was really cool, too, and one of the hats I wear is a, is a National Lieutenant for HOSA. Um, and HOSA stands for the health, it used to stand for Health Occupation Students of America, but now it's just been rebranded as it's, again, HOSA. Um, and one of the things that we did um, for HOSA this year, if you're not familiar, it's considered a career technical student organization. 
Um, every year we have about 15,000 students compete, um, both uh, high school and college um, at a national conference or international conference. We usually have four countries also participate. Uh, and our students actually compete and they actually just demonstrate skills. So I put the HOSA events here as well. Um, and you can learn more about HOSA. Uh, but one of the things we see that was great was looking at how do we actually help students prepare and what are some of the ways that we can actually make sure our students can be competitive? Well, this is actually crucial during the pandemic because the Animage and uh, Body Interact basically partnered with HOSA this year. And so all of our simulations that we did for the HOSA competition um, basically created opportunities um, for students to actually demonstrate these things via simulations. Um, we were able to do our anatomy and muscle identification using the Nanomash software. Um, we were able to use basically the scenarios on, again, trauma using the Body Interact software. And also looking at some of the opportunities for students to prepare, when you look at these competitions, they need to be able to know where all the muscles are, how the body systems work, what is the physiology. And so having students being able to study on the table was crucial. And that's one of the things I think that our, why our HOSA chapter is one of the best in the nation is because we're able to have the application for the learning and be able to go through and, and basically have opportunities to practice these skills and be able to know, uh, again, the different parts of the muscles, the body, and all the body organs, and how they actually act as one. So a quick short video about HOSA if you're not familiar. Again, this has a secondary and post-secondary option. Um, so you have, again, every year. So this year, it's going to be in Tennessee, um, and we're expecting about 15,000 high school and college students competing uh, in about 30, and also, sorry, middle school students as well, competing um, in about 40 different events. Um, there's a physical therapy skill. There's an athletic training, uh, basically a biomedical science. There's a lot of different options for students to do um, and study as well. HOSA is a great organization that invites health science interested students to join almost like a club. Uh, but we form a HOSA chapter and we get a chance to practice leadership skills, and participate in event-specific competitions and do community service. This is just my second year as a HOSA advisor and it has definitely been one of the best experiences I've had as a teacher. I love being a HOSA advisor. I love seeing students get excited about the health career that they're interested in and then also just giving them leadership opportunities um, it's exciting to see students rise up to challenges, but then also um, enjoy the successes they see as they participate in various competitive events. I joined HOSA because I found it as an opportunity to learn and to grow and to really learn more about myself and the path that I want to go into. If you're interested in the medical field, you can go learn different things about your future and just go study different topics and try to just broaden your just broaden your horizon and just figure out new things to do or compete with others who are interested in the same thing as you. It also provides like those great skills that you just need as a you know as a human being and for your future goals in life and medical school and college and just you know interaction with other kids and you make a lot of friends and connections also with HOSA and HOSA to me is just I mean, one word you can describe it is just amazing and outreaching, so it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool experience. I love HOSA. It's a fantastic opportunity. I want to be involved as much as I can, and uh, I really enjoy getting to know my HOSA students. So uh, I encourage any uh, student, if they're looking to make better connections with the community and with healthcare professionals, uh, that they should look into finding their HOSA chapter. I just I want to say that I really do love HOSA and I love the opportunity that it gives us at such a young age. I mean, you may think HOSA is just kind of a club or organization on the side, but it really is an important, important role in somebody's life and it was for me as well. I, I really highly suggest it. If you're interested in the medical field or if you don't even know and you are just curious about it, just join it. You're not going to have another chance when you're older. And if you can figure out what you want to do right now, what you like right now, that is going to be the best thing you can do.
join, <laughs> join HOSA because if you have even the slightest bit of love or passion for the medical field, then you're going to love it. HOSA is a great organization. So one of the things too, um, how we use the table, uh, as you saw, we had students actually practicing uh, external fixation. So we also use the osteopathics in action medicine as part of the peri initiative curriculum. Um, and one of the things that the part like that curriculum was designed is to encourage um, more young women to consider careers in mechanical engineering and also orthopedic surgery because less than 5% of all mechanical engineers and less than 5% of all orthopedic surgeons are females. And so being able to use the table, um, but then also have students um, use the osteopathics in action, uh, basically materials, um, learning how to actually put uh, external fixation together. As you saw, we also had a tendon realignment and reattachment surgery that we did. Um, we also had an ACL, PCL, MCL, LCL, um, basically the unhappy triad. Um, we had that as well um, and really figuring out some opportunities so they can visualize it on the table. What does the injury look like? And then we can go ahead and say, okay, this is how you're going to fix it um, and try to, again, provide an application to their learning so it makes more sense. Now, there's the other thing too about high school and I mentioned as well. Um, this is a great aspect for the table. So for work-based learning, which is my new job, um, I'm challenged to provide authentic opportunities for students to basically demonstrate skills. And even though I'm a health, still a licensed healthcare professional, one of the things that we saw was really important is that we can actually bring in nurses and we can bring in people to basically help our students um, and do mini lessons. And that actually helps um, meet the requirements for work-based learning because they're engaging in these skills alongside of industry professionals. Um, the other thing, too, that was a phenomenal program that we partner with and we're able to use the table as well is Harvard Med Science. Um, Harvard Med Science is an amazing outreach program through Harvard Medical School. Um, basically, my students are able to go online um, and they do basically a patient case study. Uh, and they actually are able to do it live via Zoom with an actual person from an actual professor and medical professional at Harvard Medical School and creating an authentic opportunity. So they're learning how to ask questions, again, demonstrate empathy, again, how to take vital signs and all these things. Um, Pre-COVID, um, Harvard Medical School would invite students onto their site for the Harvard Med Science Program. But of course, with COVID right now, everything is still virtual, but it's an amazing opportunity for you and your program. But again, providing opportunities. So it's one thing to do this case study, and have the doctor say something, but then having the opportunity to go to the table and actually visualize it, uh, again, makes it a lot more sense. And again, it provides the application piece, which is essential for work-based learning. Um, the other thing too, um, which is great. Um, and I, again, the reason why I was asked, I was asked to show what are the other areas of technology we use in our lab. It's not just a table, but you can see the table actually could be an essential component to all these. Um, the OptiCheck motion capture system, when we're looking at, again, what is the likelihood of a, of a female tearing their ACL? We can actually visualize that on the table, but we can actually see that live um, using bio, uh, basically biomechanic screening with OptiTrack. We also have a deskless uh, motion captures or a deskless wireless EMG. Um, again, knowing where the muscles are and again, putting that again, muscle innervation and being able to test electrical conductivity from those muscles is a great way to make it come to life. Vertex force plates, um, again, when we're looking at jumping in forces, a way to study about how the muscles are used, uh, and again, looking about how do we prevent, prevent uh, maybe overuse injuries. Um, this is also where we're able to look at some of our innovations. So I have students basically design like low impact, you know, exercise, things like that, that they can actually look and study and see how much force is actually eliminated by the cushion in that shoe. Uh, we have our cardio coach, VO2 max machine. Again, that's a great way students visualize that. They're able to see that in the Gatorade commercials, but then also they're able to go to the table and look at the anatomy involved with the VO2 and make sense about why is that so important? Looking at again with training and especially with your athletes, right? That's gonna be a hook and say, okay, you know what? The more efficient that your body can actually put oxygen in the bloodstream, the better overall athletic ability you're gonna have. And again, especially for endurance sports. Um, and then, of course, the other thing, too, we see works really well with our table is and it complements well as our body interact simulations table. So body interact is a company based out of Portugal. 
Um, we, again, we use them along with Enemage for our HOSA ILC this year, providing some great hands-on learning um, simulation opportunities, especially some trauma scenarios as well. But figuring about it as well, when you have that scenario, but you can also use a table to process what actually occurred and visualize that um, firsthand versus a textbook or something that's not dynamic uh, as well. So I really do appreciate your time. Um, hopefully you can see again how we use the table for our certification programs, how we use the table for Project Lead the Way. Um, and then also too, how can we use the table to integrate that with our other technology? Because again, we really are intentional about how do we tie in everything from a collective and like think collaboratively versus think about our technology as a one-off uh, because it all really is related in many ways. So um, thank you so much.